There it goes. Thank you, son. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Welcome to Mosaic Church. And hey, those of you joining us online, we want to welcome you online as well. Welcome. We're glad that you're here this morning. Hey, if you're new or visiting, we have these welcome cards in the seat pocket in front of you. Please fill one out. And if you have a prayer request, if you're new, if you're visiting, if you have any kind of updates, we'd love for you to fill one of these welcome cards out and drop it in our offering box, which is right here on the wall. We'd love to connect with you this morning. A couple announcements as we begin. We have the Mosaic Ladies Retreat coming up, so don't forget to save that date, February 25th through 27th. And Shelly, right here, raise your hand, is heading up the Ladies Retreat or helping head up the Ladies Retreat. So we have a sign-up sheet right out here. Just put your name down. Uh, we don't want cost to be a factor. Cost will be pretty, pretty limited, uh, so it should be a good time. So save the date, February 25th through 27th. Adult Sunday School class is 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. every single Sunday right here in the cry room. Not that they're crying, no. I had to use that joke again. Not that, tears, of, tears of joy. Wait, we don't have a drummer. Tears of joy. Tears of joy. It's good. So make sure to come out to 9 to 10 every Sunday. Bible reading plan. Pick up your Bible reading plan as you leave today. Uh, even if you haven't started yet, we want to encourage everybody to get in God's Word every single day. So as you leave, they're printed out. Pick one up, and that way we can be committed to being in God's Word every single day. Barb, would you like to come up? And Barb has a, just a very brief announcement. I'll try to be brief. Um, your Love Works ministry is doing really, really well in the town of Florence. Um, <clears throat> we are not a food bank. However, we can provide canned goods for our neighbors in Florence. And so for one day only, one day only, we're going to have an I can, one can food drive. So next Sunday, I want every single person here, even the kids, to bring one can of food. Uh, I know you can because it's I can, one can. So bring one can of food, and periodically throughout this year, uh, we'll be asking for different kinds of things. So I want to do these um, food drives in a, a way that's fun and interesting for you, so you don't get bogged down and think, oh no, it's her again, she's asking for something. Uh, so this first one is, I can, one can. Let me hear you say it. I <laughs> can. Now, I encourage you to go home today and set out your one can because if you're like me, by next Sunday, you'll forget and you'll come to church and, oh, raps, I forgot my one can. So set your one can out and have it ready. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about uh, isn't specifically for Loveworks, but I'll be collecting these pill bottles for Kurt Nelson, who's uh, collecting these for the Lions Club. Uh, they'll be sent to uh, third world countries where the pharmacists there have pills, but they don't have any way to get them to the patients. And so uh, we will give these bottles to Kurt. He'll make sure that they get sent to the countries and the people in the country will scrub and wash the pill bottles and get them all ready for the pharmacist. So uh, you might want to, if you can't get the label off, you might want to just cross out your name, phone number, uh, name of firstborn, whatever uh, information is important to you so, uh, that you so that you feel secure about sending them out. So these pill bottles for the Lions Club. Lastly, I want to tell you that uh, LoveWorks is having a reorganizing day this Friday, starting at 9.30, and I encourage all of you to come and lend a hand. Uh, 
I don't honestly know how long it's going to last. It depends on how many of you show up. Uh, but I have a list of things for us to do. Uh, the list gets a little longer every time I look, uh, but that's okay. Um, uh, your LoveWorks ministry is amazing, and if we can spend some time reorganizing, cleaning up a few things, it's really going to help. So thank you very much, and that's my brief message. Amen. Thank you, Barb. And as always, check our website, mosaicnazarene.org, for more information. Hey, if you join us online, be sure to leave a comment so we know that you're here, that you're worshiping with us. Welcome. Glad you're here with us. Let's worship our risen Lord and Savior today. Let's stand together and sing, Your Grace is Enough. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. For your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. For your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. For me, yes, your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough for me. Yes, your grace is enough. Heaven reaches out to us. Your grace is enough for me. Yes, your grace is enough. And I'm covered in your love. Your grace is enough for me, for me. There's an old hymn that says, Great things he hath taught us, great things he has done, and great are rejoicing in Jesus his Son. The next song is called Great Things. It's a newer version of that type of, of that theme. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. 
Jesus is our living hope. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Right now is the time for Mosaic Kids to head to Kids Church. Go have a great time. God bless you as you go. Ladies, help us start out the next song, Lord, I Need You. Your grace is more. Where 
grace is found is where you are and where you bow before the Lord this morning. We all come into this sanctuary from a different place. Some of us having a good week, some of us having an average week, or some of us struggling this week. We all come in a different place, but we all come to worship our risen God and Savior. At this time, these altars, they're always open as we worship. If you feel led to come kneel before the altar or pray in your seat, let's pray together this morning. Father, we bow before you, and as Christians, we're gathered And we worship you, God, and we pray for our our Christian brothers and sisters, God. There's many of us in this room. There's many of us joining online this morning, God, and we all come here from a different place. And Father, some of us are struggling this morning. Some of us are feeling down this morning. Some of us are feeling overwhelmed this morning. Some of us are, are feeling great this morning, God. And we bow before you, Lord. And no matter where we come from this morning, God, we give you thanks for everything you've blessed us with. And we thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross to pay the one true ultimate price for our sins and failures. Father, we thank you. And God, this morning, we pray for those in our church who are sick. We pray for those who are in the hospital. We pray for those who are hurting. We pray for those who are experiencing loss. We pray for those who are dealing with difficult relationship or financial issues, God. We pray for those who are struggling in other ways. God, you know our hearts, you know our prayers, Father, and I pray this morning that you would fill each of us with the encouragement, with the grace, with the perseverance that we need, God, to continue forward in our Christian faith, in our Christian journey. We give you thanks, Father. We thank you for this awesome church, God. And we pray this morning, God, as we open up your word, God, we pray this morning that we would take our Christian calling seriously, that we would live lives every single day with purpose, being intentional, knowing that every day is a gift from you, God, and that we are called on a great mission to serve you and spread your love with others. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take communion together this morning.
God's Word tells us that while the disciples were eating, Jesus took the bread. And when he given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ broken for us. Then Jesus took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, the blood of Christ poured out for us. As we sing this next song, let's remember the wonderful, life-changing sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross. Let's worship. Lift up on high 
the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship His majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Well, so good to see each of you this morning. Welcome. Glad you're here to worship with us. And those of you online, welcome. Leave us a comment so we know that you're here. Leave us a comment uh, right now so we know that you're worshiping with us online. It's good to see you uh, online as well. Well, I'm glad you're here this morning. We're going to continue our journey through the book of First Peter. We're going verse by verse all the way through, and it's been a good journey so far. But this last section today of chapter 1, uh, the big theme that I get from it and the big theme that we can apply to our lives today is that God has called us to live with purpose. God has called us to not just walk through our days aimlessly, but to walk through our days intentionally, living with purpose, and to take our Christian calling seriously. Because many of us, most of us are Christians in here, and God has given us a calling. God has called us to spread His love with others. God has called us to the Great Commission. God has called us as Mosaic Church to be committed to moving people from doubt and despair to faith and hope through a relationship with Jesus. And so God's placed a calling on our lives, and He has called us to take that calling seriously. But sometimes we fall into this trap, maybe you do too, I do, maybe you do too, where we just kind of slide through our days. You know, we just kind of wander through our days. And maybe we look at the clock, and at 7 o'clock at night, have you ever done this? You look at the clock, at 7 o'clock at night, you think, wow, what did I even do today? Do you ever think that? Like, what what did I even accomplish? What did I even do today? Because sometimes our days just kind of meander by and they slide by. And we should just be cautioned, we should be challenged that God has called us to live with purpose. And so as I read this last section of 1 Peter chapter 1 today, uh, that's really what I think of. You know, many of you live in the HOA here. How many of you live in the HOA here? You know, and, uh, you know, we, we bought a new house not too long ago and they said we need 14 or 15 little bushes in the yard. And the backyard is not that big. And so it's like, well, where are we going to put 14 or 15 of these little bushes? And I don't know. I didn't think we had to have that many. But apparently that's what they want when you have a new house. And so we, we have the side of the house where there's all these little bushes hidden. And nobody can even see them. But they have to be there uh, because that's what the HOA wants. And I just contrast those little bushes with the fruit trees. We have these great two fruit trees that are actually functional because they produce fruit. And Jesus talked a lot about trees that produce fruit, right? You know, that's how he wants us to live, to produce fruit. Because that's, you know, I I mean, the little bushes are kind of useless. They're just back there hiding compared to the fruit trees. And um, I was just thinking about that analogy this morning. Because that's how we live our lives sometimes. We're just kind of, you know, we're just kind of hiding in the back corner. We're just kind of doing our own thing. When instead, God has called us to bear fruit and to live life with purpose. And that is really the way he wants us to live. And so that's really what, um, what I think this, uh, this last section of 1 Peter chapter 1 is all about. So let me ask you this. Let me just ask you this question this morning. This is a good question for us. So let me ask you this. Um, how should your day-to-day life look different because of your faith in Jesus? Ask yourself that, that question this morning. How should your day-to-day life look different because of your faith in Jesus, because of your Christian calling? How should your life look different? How should your interactions look different? How should your conversations look different? How should the way you respond to people look different? You know, the other day I, I uh, was confronted by somebody. They were being very confrontational. They were being a little bit rude. And have you ever encountered somebody like this recently? They were being very rude and confrontational. And when we're confronted by people like this, we want to respond the same way, don't we? We want to respond the same way because, oh, they're being disrespectful and rude to me. And naturally, maybe you're not like this, but naturally we want to be rude back. Some of you maybe, you know, naturally you want to. 
And maybe any other day I would have been, but this particular day, I responded in Christ-like love. And, uh, and I'm glad I did. I responded in patience, in Christ-like love, and I was surprised because maybe another day I wouldn't have. And maybe you can relate to that. But uh, I'm glad I responded that way, because if I didn't, then I'd have to go to that person and make things right. You ever had to do that? To go to somebody and make things right? Not, not a lot of people do that, by the way, because we're so prideful. Some of us are so prideful that, you know, if we mess up, if we're rude to somebody, we don't, we don't go to that person and make things right. We're just like, well, it'll just kind of brush over. We're so prideful, we don't want to do that. But here's the thing, I think we should do that. I think we should go out of our way if we're rude to somebody or if we, something slips, you know, uh, because look at what that would do for our Christian testimony. You know, because people don't do that typically in society. You know, people are so prideful. They don't, they don't go out of their way to make things right if they make a mistake, uh, you know, uh, or if they say something rude or disrespectful or mean, and they don't go to that person and make things right. As Christians, I think we should do that. I think we should do that. So anyways, that is just a great testimony for our faith. And I think the way we respond to people is also a great testimony. Um, and I think the Lord's taught me that over the years. You know, it's like as a pastor and as Christians, you know, the world is watching. The world is watching the way that we live. And so we have to live with intention. We have to live with purpose. We have to take our Christian calling seriously and not just act and behave and respond like everybody else does or would. That's how we spread God's love with others. Um, so let's open up First uh, Peter chapter 1 this morning. And as we open, let's just be reminded, you know, I think one of the big challenges for us, I think one of the big encouragements for us this morning in this passage is that God wants us to take our Christian calling seriously. Let's look at verse 17 here in chapter 1. The Bible says that, and remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. So this is a reminder for us to never stop fearing God. Never stop fearing God. Never stop worshiping God and honoring God and fearing God. Um, and he, the Bible says here to consider yourself a temporary resident. And that's, that's interesting language, a temporary resident. Um, in other words, don't get too comfortable. In other words, don't get complacent. You know, be reminded that God has placed a specific calling on your life as a Christian. And really, this world here, really our lives here, we can kind of look at ourselves as temporary residents. This is not necessarily our forever home. Um, because sometimes we slip into this trap. We get complacent. Sometimes we slip into this trap. Um, and, and, and I do. Maybe you don't, but maybe you do. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you ever wake up in the morning, you go about your day, and, and you're just so busy getting, getting things done? that you really, maybe you look back on your day and you just, you forget, wow, you know, I haven't really even prayed today. I haven't really even opened God's word up today. I haven't really even thought about God today or even thought about my Christian calling. You know, sometimes I, I look back on the day and I think of all the people I interacted with that day. Was I praying for them? Was I intentionally encouraging them? Was I intentionally trying to show God's love to them? And you look back and you think, wow, Look at all these opportunities God gave me, and I didn't take up very many of them. We must take our Christian calling seriously. Um, sometimes I'll be interacting with somebody, and, and I look back, and I just think, wow, I should have invited that person to church. You ever think that? You know, maybe, maybe religion came up or church came up. I should have invited them to church. Or sometimes we're, we're interacting with people, and they're maybe sharing with us how they're struggling. And I think back, and, and I'm just like, I should have prayed for that person. I should have asked that person if I could pray for them. Do you ever look back and think that on conversations that you have? And so I think we need to be intentional to live lives with purpose, to take our Christian calling seriously. God has called us to be the light to the world. Um, there's days where you and I, we live like everybody else lives. We're not living with purpose as Christians. We're not living intentionally. We're not living like Jesus would in every conversation, in every interaction. And the Bible says here to consider yourself a temporary residence. resident. God's kingdom is coming. God's kingdom is coming. And his kingdom looks a little bit different than the kingdom that we're so used to here in this world. Um, sometimes we watch the news, we look around, 
We see what people are doing. We see the way people are behaving. We see things going on in our country. And we think to ourselves, wow, what is happening to the world? Do you ever think that when you watch the news? Wow, I can't believe that's happening. You know, so sometimes we get on social media, and the problem with social media is all the depressing news comes at you all at once. All the most extreme news stories are right there in front of you. So when you watch the, maybe you're somebody that watches the news, all the most extreme stuff that's going on is right there in front of you. You're on social media. All the most extreme, depressing stuff is right there in front of you. And it really causes us to feel anxious. It really causes us to feel down. It really causes us to feel discouraged. You know, multiple studies have been done. Multiple studies have been done that show a strong link between heavy social media use and an increased risk for depression, anxiety, loneliness, self-harm, and even suicidal thoughts. And this is the problem with media. And this is why we have to be careful what we consume. The problem with media and social media and, and lots of media is it becomes very addicting, whether it's an addicting app on your phone or you know, watching the news mindlessly or going through social media way too much. Um, is it, suck, it, it sucks us in is what it does. It sucks us in. And we end up uh, in endless political debates. Uh, we end up hearing all this depressing news that we can't do anything about. We end up doing these mindless activities. And, and what I think it ends up doing is it sucks us away from God's calling for our lives. It sucks us away from the here and now, from the reality, from the calling that God has given us. And sometimes you see lots of people sitting in a room and they're all on their phones. You ever see that? They're sitting in a doctor's office or in a room and they're all on their phones. And it's like they could... In a normal world, you know, before all that technology, they'd be interacting with each other. But now we get sucked in as Christians. We're all on our phones. And it's like, what about that person next to you? You could be encouraging them and interacting with them. And um, so I, I do think, and there is lots of research that talks about how this media, the social media age where we're glued to our smartphones, uh, just has caused us so much anxiety, has caused us so much depression. And there's all this new research coming out on that. Um, God has called us to take our Christian calling seriously, to live life with purpose, to live life intentional. Let's keep reading in verse 18. Here's what Jesus did for us. Verse 18, for you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. Real quick, the Bible says here in verse 18 that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you used to live. And what happens to many of us, what happens? Instead of living the Christian life every single day, living a purposeful life every single day, we get sucked in. We get sucked into just living for ourselves, don't we? We get sucked into just going through life, meandering through our days, just living for ourselves, living for our own pleasures, and totally forgetting about this calling that God has placed on our lives, and we fall into this trap sometimes. We get sucked into our own social status or keeping up with the Joneses. We get sucked into addicting apps or video games or social media or endless political debates or living a life solely focused on pleasure. This stuff sucks us in. Can you relate? This stuff sucks us in, and what it often does is distracts us from our Christian calling. It distracts us from times of prayer with God. It distracts us from reading God's Word. It distracts us from interacting with our friends and neighbors and random people because we're so engrossed in ourselves and our media and our phones sometimes. God has called us to live a life with purpose. God has called us to take our Christian calling seriously. And the Bible says here that Jesus paid that price to save you from that empty life. Let's keep going. Verses 19 and 20. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. The Bible says here that God sent Jesus to pay the one true ultimate price to save us from ourselves, to save us from our mistakes and failures. Jesus gave everything. Jesus gave everything to save us from the empty life we used to live. And when we're not living in obedience to God, when we're not living out the calling that Christ gave us, it's kind of like a slap in the face to God, isn't it? 
it's kind of like a slap in the face to God. You know? When we go about our days, go about our lives living without purpose, kind of pushing our Christian calling to the side and going and doing whatever we want, it's kind of a slap in the face to God who paid the ultimate price on the cross to save us from an empty way of living. Jesus wants you to live with purpose. God has created you to live with purpose and to take our Christian calling seriously. You know, and, and, and this is the big idea for us today, I think. This is the big idea. God called you. Jesus died for you. And the Holy Spirit lives in you, and he's created us to live with purpose. He's created us to live with purpose. He's given you a call as a Christian and created you to live with purpose. Not just to wander through life doing whatever. Not just to wander through our days, you know, whatever it is that we do, being distracted, living for our own pleasures. God has called us to live with purpose. He's given us a calling for our lives as Christians. Let's look at verses 21 and 22. We can relate to this. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God, and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters love each other deeply with all of your heart. What does the Bible say here? It says you've placed your faith and hope in God. He's forgiven you of your sins. He's rescued you from your past and from your sins. He saved you. And now he's given you a calling as Christians. He's given you a calling for your life. He's called you to be different. He's called you to be set apart. He's called you to be unique in a good way. And he's given us a calling. And verse 22 talks about that. That we must show sincere love to each other. Because that's what it all boils down to, right? We think about, well, what has God called me to do? What does it look like in my life to live out my Christian calling? It starts with love showing sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters, loving each other deeply with all of your heart, learning what it means to love each other deeply with all of your heart. Let's look at verse 23. He continues on, verse 23. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. Continuing this train of thought, you know, using the language, the Bible uses the language, we've been born again. We have this new life, and so, you know, it's so different than this old life we used to live, this old, mindless, meaningless way of living that we sometimes get sucked into. The Bible says get rid of that. Get rid of that because we've been born again. And the life that we've been born again to is a life that will, that, that will not quickly end, a life that will last forever. Your new life will last forever forever. This new way of living will last forever. The calling that Jesus has placed on your life is a calling that will last forever as the kingdom of God comes. And our calling here and now, our calling today is to love each other as brothers and sisters, living with purpose, taking our Christian calling seriously. We recognize that we're supposed to be different. God has called us to be different. God has called us to live differently. So again, ask yourself the question this morning, how does my life look different because I'm a Christian? How does my day-to-day -day look different than everybody else because of my faith in Jesus? How does the way that I respond to people, how does the way that I interact with people, how does the things that I do look different because of my faith in Jesus? Ask yourself that question this morning. And maybe the Holy Spirit will convict us this morning and say, you know what? There's an area of your life where you're just kind of living like everybody else, and I've called you to live this way instead. Live with purpose. Let's finish up the chapter, verses 24 and 25. As the scriptures say, people are like grass. Their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And that word is the good news that was preached to you. And so the closing thought here is the good news about Jesus that you and I, many of us in here, you and I have come to believe is a good news that will last forever. 
And so this new way of living that God has called us, taking our Christian calling seriously, living with purpose, this is something that will last forever. You know, this is something that's eternal. And that's why we have to take our Christian calling seriously in the here and now. That's why we have to live with purpose right now because God has called us to a, a new life. God, God has given us eternal life. And this new life, this eternal life lasts forever. And that's why it's so important that we take our Christian calling seriously because God has called us as Christians to be in the business of making disciples, moving people from doubt and despair to faith and hope through a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's called us to spread love with others. He's called us to be the light. And it all boils down to love. God has changed us forever. God has renewed us forever. God has restored us forever, and God has given us eternal life, and he's placed a calling on your life. He's placed a calling on your life to live differently. Now, I believe one of the big themes in this passage is that because God saved us, because God paid that ransom for us, he's called us to live differently. He's called us to take our Christian calling seriously and live a life of purpose. When we wake up in the morning, there's people we interact with throughout the day. And, and those people are all different opportunities. Those conversations that we have with people throughout the day are all opportunities where we can spread God's love to others. And sometimes we go about our day and we look back and we think, wow, I should have I maybe shared my faith with that person or I should have maybe pr pray, asked that person if I could pray for them. Or I should have said something encouraging to that person. You know, and I think if we live with this Christian mindset, if we live taking our Christian calling seriously, we look back on our day and we always see as opportunities. When we wake up in the morning, all we see is opportunities. When we run into people, when we interact with people, it's opportunities to spread God's love with others. And that's where it starts as far as taking our Christian calling seriously. He's called us to be in prayer regularly. He's called us to read his word regularly. He's called us to to pray for people specifically who he's placed in our lives. He's called us to spread his love with others. He's called us to invite people to church, to be in the, in the business of making disciples and moving people closer towards Jesus. This is our Christian calling, right? So what does it look like in your life? How do you live differently because of your Christian calling? Or how should you live differently because of your Christian calling? This is something we can ask ourselves today. This is something we can go before the Lord today and ask him, God, how should I be living differently in 2022 because of my Christian calling? I believe this passage is an encouragement for us to take our Christian calling seriously and to live our lives with purpose. Let's pray this morning. Father, we just bow before you this morning, God. We bow before you, God, and we just say, Lord, forgive us for the times in our lives when we just kind of slip through life. We just kind of meander through our days, God, not living with purpose. Forgive us, God, for wasting time. Forgive us, God, for missing opportunities you've given us to spread your love with others. God, help us get away from ourselves. Help us put down our phones and get off the media and get out into other people's lives, God. Help us open up your word, God, and pray to you on a regular basis. Help us take our Christian calling seriously. Speak to us this morning, we pray, and show us each individually, we pray, how we can take our Christian calling seriously, how we can live with purpose in our lives, God. Father, we're reminded this morning as we read your word, we're reminded that you paid the ultimate ransom for us. You paid the ultimate price for us on the cross, which saved us from this mindless way of living, this empty way of living. And you've given us a new life. You've given us a new purpose. You've given us a new calling. Remind us of that, God, that your kingdom has come and is still coming. And you've called us to be a part of it. Father, show us in our life specifically. Show us in our lives individually how we can live out our Christian calling, how we can live our lives with purpose every single day as we wake up in the morning. Show us specifically, God. Reveal to us what that would look like in each of our lives. We pray in Jesus' name.
Amen. Please stand for our benediction, then we'll be dismissed this morning. Go now, sent by the one who is sent by God. Walk in the light, testify to the resurrection of Christ, forgive the sins of all, and live at peace with one another. And may God bless you with life forever. 
May Christ Jesus breathe his spirit and peace into you. And may the Holy Spirit lead you into the life and light of God. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.